Hi, and welcome to From a Full Cup. I'm your host, Natalie Mullen, a certified wellness educator, speaker, facilitator, and teacher. From a Full Cup is a mental wellness education podcast that helps women prioritize their wellness and put themselves first, because you can't pour from an empty cup. I will present unique wellness tips and strategies in ways that are relatable, practical, and can be adapted for your lifestyle. Whether speaking at an event, facilitating a workshop, or coaching clients, I'm passionate about helping women dream big, take action, and move the needle forward to achieve the life they want. Hey, y'all, and welcome to From a Full Cup. I am so excited to have Colleen Blake Miller here with me today. I will just let her introduce herself and then we'll get started. Hey, Natalie. Hello to all the listeners. Uh, So happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate that. So Colleen, tell us a little bit about yourself. As many who are listening, I'm sure, um, you know, someone who wears a bunch of different hats. So professionally speaking, I am a registered psychotherapist and I run a fully virtual private practice. I've had this private practice for 16 years in May and I've been full time for the past five years in my practice. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a mom of four. Uh, I'm a wife and um, I'm a speaker. Oh goodness. Like I'm, I'm a lover of people. <laughs> I'm an author. So many things, so many things, but ultimately I'm someone who loves to um, pour good things into the people that I come across in my life. Awesome. Sounds good. And y'all, I met Colleen at, um, a wellness retreat that we were both actually speaking at yeah. and her personality is so captivating. So I hope that you guys are really going to enjoy this uh, mm-hmm. podcast. I know you guys are going to get a lot out of it. And I just love that you kind of mentioned all these roles and all these hats that you wear, because I think there are so many multifaceted women doing so many things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it feels impossible. It feels like this impossible task, but it is possible. And um, you're a great example of that. And just for the, just for the folks that are listening, I know um, in, in my circle, sometimes, you know, I I have a friend or two that'll be like, oh gosh, now that you've told us, you know, this other thing you're doing now, I feel bad, you know, and, and, and maybe sometimes it's like, I, I don't feel like I'm doing enough or I don't feel like I'm doing all those things. And regardless of whatever we're up to, I think that, I think we're just, my 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 thought is just pursue what's in your heart, whatever that could be. And it could be resting with your whole entire heart. You know what I mean? So um, especially in our world now, we have to be so careful because we can see so much of what other people are up to. We have to be so careful to protect our mental health and in terms of comparing ourselves with other what with what other folks are um are up to. Yeah. No, that's so true. I actually just recorded um, a podcast. So on Mondays, I have this podcast called Off the Cuff. And the title was called Ordinary Can Be Extraordinary. Absolutely. And it was just talking about the fact that your regular life, your simple life, take ownership of it and, and feel completely accomplished and validated in how you're living out your life. Like there is nothing wrong with going to a nine to five, coming back home. There's nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad. There's nothing wrong with just being a person who exists and has one rule. I think all of us have our own purpose and our own calling. Yeah. And I think once we can find the fulfillment in what we're doing, and as you said, like do it with your whole heart. I think that word fulfillment is really important to me in terms of how do you want to live your life? Mm-hmm. And are you checking in with yourself? Are you happy with how your life is? Are you happy with how you're showing up? Mm-hmm. And if you are, then all is well. <laughs> yes. So you recently made a big announcement on your Instagram. Can mm-hmm. you share with the listeners what this announcement was and why was it a big deal for you? <laughs> um, I appreciate the question because you said, why was it a big deal for you? So first of all, I will just put this caveat in there. I'm a very dramatic person. Let's just start with that. Um, I was that child that was, you know, growing up a little extra 
And uh, once I get to know folks, not so much, you know, in my older years, but in my younger years, folks that knew me know, okay, Colleen's going to be a little bit extra, going to be a little bit dramatic. So I didn't just make my announcement. I made a pre-announcement announcement. I was like, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> I've got an <laughs> announcement. <laughs> and then a couple of posts later, I, I made the announcement. And I, in between the time of the pre-announcement and my announcement, I kind of got it in my head. I was like, why do you got to be so extra coming? <laughs> why do you got to be so dramatic? But then I stopped myself. I said, you know what? For me, this is a big deal. And, mm -hmm. and I reserve my small little piece of real estate in the social media world to present what is important to me and what mm -hmm. I think is worthy of talking about and celebrating. And so I recently went back to school. I went back to school. I am doing a doctoral program and I have thought about this for many, many years. It has been the, the the gap between my master's and going back to do this program has been 17 years. So for me, it is worth hyping up because that hype and excitement is sort of like helping me to get my head in gear. Like you can do this girl. You're here. You're, you know, you, you got accepted. You are, are capable. And, and this is a huge deal um for for me in my eyes and so yeah sharing that with my community was a lot of um it gave me a lot of joy and it actually inspired a lot of folks too in terms of how people have been reaching out it's definitely inspirational and i mean 17 years is is a long time and and a lot has changed in your life you That's you're right. married with four children like that is right. a lot of change so to make this decision to go back to school like this is a dream for you yourself personally mm -hmm. and I think that that's really exciting because I think that sometimes when you become a mom you become a wife it's hard it's sometimes it's hard to put your dreams for you're thinking of what's best for the family or how does this impact the family how does this impact other people so how has your journey changed your perspective in life mm -hmm. returning to school at this at this time yeah, well, I think for me, um, so the the ultimate reason for me going back to school is because as a as a therapist, I believed there's more for me to learn. There's more for me to learn. There's there's more growth for me as a as a professional, so that I one feel. Uh, a greater sense of, I think, direction in terms of the work that I do. And then secondly, I just want to be able to offer my clients more, right? It's impossible to know everything about mm -hmm. all of the things. And so mm -hmm. for me, it's kind of like, why not, right? Why not delve more into an understanding of um, how to become sharper and, and, you know, just a little bit, um, I, I hesitate to use the word better, um, but to feel better, I guess, in the work that I'm doing and to feel like I am, I'm bringing my best to the work that I'm, that I'm doing. Yeah. That's what yeah. really inspired me. Yeah. And I think that idea of, you know, just constant personal development and personal growth and, and just being able to stretch yourself, stretch your capacity, stretch your knowledge, um, is so important. And, you know, I can see on your face, your smile, you know, as you're talking about this. So clearly this is something that is bringing you joy, this decision mm -hmm. and, and this pursuit of your doctoral, uh, which is just amazing. And, you know, if you could just talk a little bit more about how do you feel like your decision to pursue your dreams impacts your overall well-being? Mm -hmm. Well, because um, I, I, I'm someone who you know, the, I'm, maybe you've heard the saying, they say like the richest place in the world is the grave mm -hmm. with all the ideas that never were explored or pursued. Um, good Lord, that just makes me so sad thinking about that. I, I don't know yeah. how, how you, um, Natalie, or the listener, I don't know how you deal with an unrealized dream, but when there's something in my heart and in my mind, uh, I actually feel like 
it's not even mine. I feel like God put that there in a Mm. sense. And it's like, this thing continues to haunt me and, and, and nag at me. And I just can't, I mean, mind you, I've had ideas. Like I wanted to be a belly dancer when I was a little kid, like that, those kinds of ideas like that are fleeting. If they, if they go away, then okay. Right. It's not, you know, that, that, there isn't that sense of call or the sense of purpose, but for the things that you just can't shake. And I think Mm. 18 years of wrestling with, should I go back to school? What program should I pursue? What school should I, I never ever had a time that I felt like um, that's behind me. I no longer want to do that. And so knowing how I deal with unrealized dreams for myself I, I, I knew that there'd be a sense of disappointment, this sense of, man, I wonder what could have been, I wonder. And, and, and you bring that into, I think your relationships, you bring that into your work. Sometimes mm-hmm. these, these things actually could end up um, fueling things like jealousy and envy mm-hmm. and bitterness. If you don't actually pursue what's yours to pursue, then you see other people pursuing what they're called to do. And then you, then you, now you're in your feelings about it. Now it yeah, ticks exactly. you off. Like, why are you always talking about this thing and that thing? Um, maybe the issue is not the way that they're pursuing their life. Maybe the issue is that you have not um, honored your own passion and your own sense of, of call, your own dreams enough. And, and when you see somebody else, it is like, it, it's grinding your gears. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, a, that's how it's kind of changed my perspective. I think I, I'm not just a mom. I'm not just a uh-huh. wife. I'm not just a therapist. I am a woman who um, is, is filled with a lot of different abilities. And um, there's a lot of opportunities that are available. And to me, I'm able to bring my best self when Uh I can just give a hundred or as much as I, as I can realistically to the things that are in my, that are in my heart. And I feel like my kids and my, and my spouse, like those are the most important people in my life. Um, Uh I, I think that they get the best of me when I am pursuing what I'm passionate about. Yeah. I love, we can just end now. I love everything <laughs> that you just said. It is so in alignment with the way that I view life as well. And um, like, I don't even know where to start. There's so many things I wanted to touch on. And at the same time, it was perfect just the way it was. But you know what? And I didn't actually realize you had this dream for 17 years. I thought it was something you just thought about within like mm-hmm. the last year or so. Mm-hmm. So that is really encouraging, I think, to the listeners because Sometimes you have a, a dream, but A, you might not be able to realistically yeah. um, act on it right away. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes you, you need to just sit with it for a while and see, do I really want to do this? Or as you said, is it just a fleeting, a fleeting thing? Okay. Um, and then, you know, you wait for the right time. Maybe you wait for that dream to get to this point where you're like, I have to get it out. It's like birthing that baby, right? You're like, yeah. I have to do this. And I love what you said about you pursuing your dreams allows you to show up best for your family. Mm -hmm. So it's not at all that you're being selfish and taking away. You are actually doing better. You're showing up better because you are able to live fully authentically. You don't have, you know, the jealousy, the resentment, the what if you're just happy (laughs) because you're able to pursue the things you want. You're able to really serve your family from a place of joy and fullness. And so I think that is such an important message. And I'm so glad to, that you were able to share that mm-hmm. in this journey, or maybe the the process towards the journey. Have there been any moments of self doubt or questioning um, along this journey? Is it the right decision, or any other things you might be pondering? And if so, how do you manage to still move forward and stay focused on your dreams? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, there's been um, self doubt. I think even when I was writing my personal statement letter to like apply to the program, I was just like in my head because it's been like I, I keep saying it's been 17 years. It's been 17 years since I've like written an academic paper. How am I going to present myself? Um, and and so what I what's been helpful for me is. Um, so the program that I'm doing, it's a hybrid program. When we had our in-class portion for the courses that we're doing right now, we had two weeks where we were in class together with our cohort, 
Monday to Friday, two weeks, nine to five, and many nights I stayed late, probably eight, nine, working on, on um, like, you know, writing and stuff like that with other colleagues, hearing other people's struggles and challenges and self-doubt very quickly, very, as soon as we kind of got in, they had us delving in and making ourselves really vulnerable, talking about some of our insecurities and some of our fears and, and, and something happens when you have those kinds of conversations with a group, you realize, Uh man, it's not just me, man, Uh I'm not alone here. Oh, this is actually a part of the experience, the human experience. That's right. Uh And these are the things that someone like myself, I talk to my clients about on a, on a regular basis, but of course we all Um, every heart knows its own sorrow. And sometimes it feels, it just feels different when it's your own battle. Um, But for me, um, I am someone who I I believe in and I, and I encourage people confront the fears, confront those limited beliefs, confront whatever it is that's bouncing around in your head. You've got to examine it to ensure that it's factual. Um, And, and so that's been my, that's been my process. It, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a question of, am I good enough for this? And so with every paper I do write, right, with every, it's kind of like, you'll never know if you're good enough if you don't try. So you got to try. And then when you, when you put that effort forward, and then you realize like, oh, I can do it. I actually, this is actually not bad. This is actually pretty good. So it's it's about confronting and facing those fears. That's been um, the way that I have been navigating the the self doubt. Yeah, because you help people all the time with self doubt and with limiting beliefs and that kind of thing. And I think sometimes people think, you know, the experts have it all together; they're perfect. And I just really want to challenge that because I don't think any of us are perfect. We're all learning and growing, um, but. The difference is, as a psychotherapist, what you mentioned is that you have a process. So Mm -hmm. you have a process to work through the self-doubt. And I think that's what's important. We're all going to have moments where we're facing different challenges. We're questioning ourselves. But what is the process? How do you move forward nevertheless, despite or in spite of? Yes, I feel I'm not sure if I'm qualified, but I'm going to write the paper anyways. And then what happens on the flip side of it, the confidence comes in doing because you look at the paper. First of all, as soon as you like press send or or print or whatever, however you submit your papers, you already feel great because you're like, wow, I accomplished this. And then you get back your mark and you're like, okay, somebody else agrees with me. Look at that grade, you know? And, And that is what continues to build your confidence. And so the more you do things that build your confidence, the more the self-doubt diminishes. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do anything, then how are you ever going to combat the self-doubt, right? So that's such an important um, uh, part of it is just taking that action. Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about your family earlier, and I'm going to change direction a little bit because I want to know when you're supporting your personal dreams, you have four children. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great responsibility you obviously have. And one of those hats is mom and you know, you never can take off the mom hat. Right. right. And so mom is responsible for a lot of the scheduling logistics and just being available just as a person in the household that's a parent. So how do you manage those logistics while you're, because obviously you just said like you're doing nine to five um, days at times, sometimes it was nine to eight, nine to nine. So this is taking up time. So how do Mm -hmm. you manage what's happening at home, like the family logistics and scheduling, how do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. So without a shadow of a doubt, my, my spouse, he is 1000%, like we are in a partnership. So Uh we both carry the weight together. Uh Um, And I think having the support of, uh, a spouse or having a support of, 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 a, of a partner has been a huge aspect of me being, being where I am now. And, and that has gone both ways, right? My husband and I were both entrepreneurs and in the years when we first um, were married and he was the entrepreneur and I worked, um, you know, like a nine to five job in this mm-hmm. field, but I did my practice part-time and then I worked for like counseling agencies and those kinds of things. 
I, I am that spouse that I'm going to support your dream, regardless of what it is, because you're not going to be in your, you know, in your downtime thinking I could have been great if, if this woman didn't get in my way. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, pursue it, like whatever mm-hmm. the thought is, the dream, go for it. And so in the same way, it's been reciprocated on my end. So that's a huge part. And then our family system is, 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 is deep and it's like strong. So finding Mm -hmm. a godmother, godparent, grandparent to support, watch the kids. We've kind of just built our life like that. So it's Mm -hmm. not, it's not one or the other. It's not just our unit. We literally have a village and the village steps in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really love that. And, you know, I think this idea of talking about partnership, but not only partnership, because even if it's two people, it's it's still a lot. And sometimes you just need more. So I think mm-hmm. uh, what I'm hearing is that you, you've been intentional about setting up this family system or this family network, this this village, and not just of biological family members, but but other people in your That's community right. That's right. that can help out. I think it's, I think this is key. Um, to helping, especially for moms, because there's so many moms who they feel burnt out, they feel they're not able to pursue their dreams. But I think that, you know, if you can look outside of yourself, look look to wherever you need to look to, to get the support. Sometimes it's a paid support, right? Maybe it's yeah. a babysitter, or, you know, you send the kids to camp, or you use the daycare. Uh, think about how can you build this network for yourself with whoever's around you, right? And some people, I understand that some people just don't have family around them, Mm -hmm. right? And I'm very cognizant of that. But just find a way to be in a community where you can connect with other people. And after you build trust and and comfort with those people, you know, invite them into your network and and just ask for help. I think a lot of us are afraid to ask for help. And you'd be surprised how many people are willing and more than happy to say, yeah, okay. So you have a unique perspective because you're a psychotherapist and you're also a minister. And so I want you to talk a little bit about how you bridge these two roles, because historically and traditionally, especially in certain cultures or certain religious groups, you know, they can seem to be at odds, this idea Mm -hmm. of therapy and spirituality or faith. And I want you to talk about how you bridge these two roles in your own life and why it's important to you. Mm-hmm. I think there's there definitely is a lot of stigma, not just within faith communities. I'm a member of um, the Black community and within coming from a West Indian culture, there's a lot of stigma that's connected to mental health, mental illness and those kinds of things. And so I think sometimes faith can compound on that as well and make it even, even the, the stigma even greater. Like, oh, if you if you claim mental health problems and that is a sign that your faith is weak, but that's a lie. Just like with some of the things we doubt within ourselves, like the limited thinking and limited beliefs, some of these beliefs that we've carried or that have been passed on are just plain old lies. Um, They're misconceptions that need to be confronted. And so I have and continue to um, fight against that. And one of the missions that I have in going back to school is with an intention of of building, like going into some of the faith communities that I'm connected with to help to bridge that gap between mental health and and faith. Because, you know, when, when we talk about statistics, so one in five Canadians struggling with a mental health problem in their lifetime, that means mm-hmm. that means it's everywhere. It's not only outside of faith communities it's it includes members of the faith community as well something I want you to explain though is you know we use this term mental health and I think sometimes like people don't really know like what does mental health mean so mental health is something that we all have just like physical health Uh, and and ideally we want our physical health our mental health to be optimal. So it's not a given that you're just going to have mental health, you know, that your mental health is going to be optimal the same way that it's not a given that your physical health is going to um, be, be optimal. There are things that you have to do to foster uh, optimal mental health and the same with uh, your physical health. 
And, and so when you talk about mental health, we, we, we discuss things that are, are done so that you are able to navigate the challenges of life, the stressors of life, and those kinds of things. When pressure comes into our lives, when we have loss, when we have you know a, a, a tragedy, when we have trauma, all of these things, they, they um, could jeopardize our mental health. Um, it's going to cause us mental and emotional distress. And so this idea of how to navigate and bring ourselves back to a place where we are well and we are able to function, that's the whole sort of idea of, of what mental health is. Mental illness is when there is some kind of, um, when there's some kind of um, um, problem with your ability to function um, mentally. So your uh, cognition is impacted, your behavior is impacted. Um, you could also be experiencing things in your in your physical um, in in terms of your physiology as well. And it would be something that is diagnosable based on the symptoms. Not everybody with a mental health problem necessarily has a mental illness. So yeah. we have to we have to be careful in terms of how we how we distinguish those those two. So when a person when does a person need to talk to a therapist? Um, I would I would argue personally that the work of therapy is something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Therapy is a good idea for us all. It's it's a it's kind of like a tool that you can use to maintain your mental health and to work towards optimizing that. Often people wait until they're in crisis or people often wait until, okay, now I've been diagnosed with a mental illness. And so now I need to seek out psychotherapy or support through therapy, which, okay, if that's what's going on, then, then go for it. But I would just challenge us, don't wait for a crisis to, right. to, see, to seek that kind of support out. If there's an issue that you are dealing with, um, which everybody, every one of us has issues, every one of us have things in our lives that are not working the way that we ideally want them to, therapy is a great space that you can carve out just for you to sort through whatever's heavy that you might be navigating and, and, and carrying in your, in your life. Maybe it's a breakup. Maybe it's a transition in life. Maybe, um, maybe you are in, in, in distress and you've been trying to figure it out on your own, but all the things you're trying, they're not yielding anything that's good. Uh -huh. Then consider talking to a professional, getting some support to, uh, land on solutions that will ultimately um, be long lasting for you. No, definitely. And I so agree. I think that therapy is for everyone. And I think that everyone should try it. Therapy is there for support. And as you said, the goal is for optimal well-being. So if you care about wellness, if you care about your well-being and you want to strive for optimal mental health, the therapy is definitely one of those tools in the backpack that you can use whenever you so choose. So I think um, this has been a really helpful and informative and insightful discussion, Colleen. And I want you to tell everybody, how can the people find you to learn mm -hmm. more about your services? Yeah, I've, I've really loved this conversation as well too, Natalie. And uh, I love... I love these kinds of conversations and I try in my social media, which is probably the, the, the best place folks can find me is on Instagram. That's like the one social media platform that I'm committed to. <laughs> There's just too many to, too to many. Kind of keep up with all the things, but Instagram mm -hmm. is a place that I have been using to create content, to help support folks on their mental health uh, journey and their wellness journey. So you can find me uh, my handle is at Colleen Blake Miller. And in the link in bio, you could find all of my stuff there, website, uh, the link to my website, email, courses that I run and um, different events that I host over the over the you know course of the year and that kind of that kind of thing. And then again, good content to I try to make put a smile on people's face <laughs> while we talk about 
some of the heavier things in, uh, you know, under the umbrella of mental health and wellness. Exactly. And I will have that linked up for you in the show notes. Colleen, thank you so much for this conversation. Thanks for having me. Until next time, continue to serve yourself, your loved ones, and your community from a full cup.